Year Press Conference, ladies and gentlemen of the Press Corps. It is indeed a pleasure interacting with you, and especially over the past seven months. And as Minister of Social Protection, I am looking forward for more opportunities like this in the new year, where we can have an open encounter concerning the social protection of this precious nation. So before I present my review of the achievements of this ministry and projections for the future, let me wish you and yours and the company you each represent a prosperous and blessed 2016. The last seven months have been exciting, educative, and at times extremely energy sapping. Exciting because of the novel things we have been implementing. Educative due to the many lessons I and the dedicated staff of the Social Protection Ministry have learned from the feedback from the public we serve. And energy sapping because of the sheer size of this ministry and the many critical things we are compelled to do simultaneously on a daily basis to help meet the needs of the public and the vision of the APNU AFC administration, which our nation, our people have elected. Among the new things I hinted about earlier is the creation of a special projects unit dedicated to help find willing donors to fund the many initiatives we are currently pursuing and the multitude of others in the pipeline for the new year. Since our economy cannot currently fund all the development schemes we envisage, this unit is part of our strategy to ensure there is provision for our vision. Among the challenges we also face is removing our indigenous population from the periphery of national development. With assistance from the Canadian government, we are training a number of these Guyanese to be ambassadors who will help bridge existing gaps as we pursue development of their communities to help them beat the pinch of poverty. In addition to these, we are also currently confronting operational, administrative, and infrastructural, infrastructural challenges. The Ministry of Social Protection wants to run with its programs, but we are hamstrung. And we are hamstrung by staff shortage in the Labor Department, our accounts department, and in our child care and protection agency, among others. In addition, there is, as you know, the perennial shortage of funding to monetize the initiatives we have been conceiving. As I see it, we will beat the odds. Against all odds, we triumphed at the May 11 polls Against the odds, we hiked salaries for public servants and providing those earning less than 500000 with $50,000 to help brighten their Christmas. Against the odds, we have also increased old age pension payments and public assistance to families and individuals. We are finding ways to overcome the existing challenges. We confront and we plan to do so in the future. In the near future, just a day and a few hours from now, that is 2016 to be precise, the nation can look forward to priority placement on early childhood development, the opening of the long-awaited family court the critical counter-trafficking in persons unit to be enhanced 
and additional staff to combat existing and emerging challenges. Persons with disability would have begun to receive their books um, for assistance for an entire year instead of the traditional six months. And more important, by 2017, we are working towards um, ID cards replacing pension books and public assistance books for our pensioners and public assistance recipients. The ministry has also created its own PR department to ensure through you, the media, the public remains of a with the ongoing plans, policies, and programs of this new government. In addition, we are merging the Men's Affairs and Women's Affairs Bureau into a single unit to be named the Gender Affairs Bureau in keeping with government's vision and global trends. This unit will be launched in the new year. In keeping also with our vision, we have delayed the probation department from the broader social services program to have a more focused approach and to help in resolving some of the ongoing challenges and struggles faced by individuals and families. This focused approach is by design, ladies and gentlemen. It is part of the reason for the ministry's name change because we believe that all Guyanese deserve the good life. The government believes that it must support all Guyanese through improved service delivery, greater efficiency, cutting the response time in meeting public needs, and creating new and innovative ways in helping improve the quality of their lives and the generations to come. Therefore, Guyanese will continue to benefit from improved safety networks, including significant increases in old age pension, a stronger focus on gender mainstreaming, including crafting a national policy, stricter enforcement of the nation's labor laws, greater child protection policies, increased and more timely responses to social ills, and more frequent consultations with stakeholders on the way forward. The challenges faced by the Ministry of Social Protection are married. Finding a permanent solution for the ongoing war against our children is nightmarish. The brutal, bloody, and ever so often life-ending assaults against our women and girls must end, and we must work assiduously to ensure that that happens. The callous disregard for our elderly is alarming, and those who are temporarily or permanently homeless must not be left to the vagaries of Mother Nature or the unnatural tendencies of the heartless amongst us. Existing, the existing Women of Worth program will become gender neutral in 2016, therefore giving opportunity to single parents, male fathers, and other males within our society to be able to access these small loans and grants. Our relationship with NGOs will be wider in breadth and deeper in scope. Improvement programs for the night shelter, the Palms Geriatric Home, the Hugo Chavez Center for Rehabilitation and Reintegration, the Guyana Women's Leadership Institute, the Board of Industrial Training, the Corps and Friendly Society Department, and the Statistical Department, including occupation, safety, and health, will be delinked from industrial relations. This is more than a mouthful, but not all of what are in our plans. I know, ladies and gentlemen, that they are all part of what the Ministry of Social Protection is expected to provide for our citizens. 
But I would like to let you know, and also the public know, that this is also part of myself and my staff's daily labor of love. I thank you, and I pray that we all will have a blessed 2016. I would just like to speak on behalf of the Patient and Social Services Department. And um, as my minister said just now, uh, she spoke a little bit about the delinking of the services, which is the service we, um, in 2005, there was a merger of the probation and family welfare with the, probation, with the social security uh, department. And um, we have now found it uh, prudent as a result of the volume of work that officers are faced with <coughs> to delay the services so that we can have a better response to the demand uh, as it relates to social issues in our society. Um, uh, what we have discovered is that there has been an increase in the volume of social problems and we want to ensure that we have a comparable response uh, from the department uh, in dealing with these uh, various issues that are out there in society. As a result of that, um, we are further looking to uh, sectionalize the, the department and thus far we have uh, such sections within the department as the uh, research and development, which has to do with training, and also community outreach. Uh, we have also um, the youth development section of the department, and that seeks to deal with issues as it relates to uh, youth delinquency um, in our society, and also issues pertaining to families, uh, because we recognize that you just cannot divorce uh, issues pertaining to children from the families. So uh, while we deal with children, delinquent children, we want to ensure that we also look at the conditions uh, within families uh, in, in which children um, are nurtured and we want to ensure that uh, those conditions are conducive for the positive development of our children. Uh, we also want to look at issues pertaining to what's taking place in our communities and for years we've been trying to reach out to men and um, that has been posing a challenge but we recognize that men are very much involved in sports and so within our department, we have a set up a section that has to deal with communities. And we're hoping that through the section that um, we can reach men through uh, sports and uh, other such activities. And that has already commenced in this year and it has begun to already bear fruits. So um, <clears throat> the department has as, as expanded uh, and as its role, uh, name will suggest uh, probation. Uh, which actually is an aspect of um, uh, uh, sentence management, if I may put it that way, for want of a better term at this point in time. Um, <clears throat> we want to ensure that um, persons placed before our court or uh, brought before um, within the realms of the court system in terms of persecution, we want to ensure that they are not only just sent to prison and have cust custodial sentences, but we want to look at three aspects of um, uh, the, uh, justice within society, and that is um, we want to look at security, we want to look at rehabilitation, and we want to look at um, reintegration of persons who might be placed before the court. Security in the sense that we want to ensure that our prison system does not, um, is not so overpopulated that it poses a great challenge to security and we recognize that the probation department has a great role to play in, in that and so um, we want to ensure that with the alternative sentencing um, the probation department can play a great role in reducing the numbers of persons who are sent to prison so rather than custodial sentences persons can be placed um, on the supervision persons can be placed on probation particularly first offenders and uh, persons who are charged with not so um, uh, grave uh, offenses against the criminal offenses act and so we we want to look at that we're looking at that presently and we also want to ensure that we can provide the court uh, with such information that the court seeks so that in their judic uh, adjudication in, in cases, uh, those um, uh, decisions can be made which would be looking at uh, rehabilitation of offenders um, because we just don't want a situation where persons are placed in, in, in prison and without any proper uh, work being done with them in terms of rehabilitation and so that um, our uh, population, particularly those within 
those years uh, can be considered in the peak of their labor years uh, are not just taken out of society, but they can be reformed and they can be reintegrated into the society. Presently, um, we have a situation too where a lot of uh, juveniles are, are being uh, uh, placed within the uh, NOC and we recognize that institutionalization of children oftentimes is not the better thing, uh, but it should be the last resort. So uh, the section of our department, as it relates to youth uh, services, we're looking at that and um, we're working towards uh, reducing the amount of uh, children who are placed in the uh, NOC, New Opportunity Corps that is. And even for those who are placed there, there is aftercare uh, being done with them. So uh, when they leave the institution, they can leave um, as persons with some amount of skills who can be reintegrated into society and be productive. The probation department, um, as it is right now, has also been dealing, like Minister said just now, with uh, issues of social security, and that pertains to old age pension, public assistance, and uh, what we have been looking at um, as it relates to public assistance, uh, we just don't want to be doling out monies to persons, but we be looking at the whole issue of conditional cash transfer to ensure that persons who are placed within the, the on, on um, uh, public assistance um, are not just given, if I may uh, attempt to call it grants, but to ensure that we have value for money that persons can um, uh, be helped towards becoming. Be, towards um, self-actualization uh, and that uh, they can be more productive. And so the department has been working in those areas and we have been seeing some fruits, but what I would like to say that in all things we can say uh, more can be done and we are hoping that more will be done uh, with increased capacity of the department and in terms of um, strengthening and also skills training. And I'm very thankful that uh, that is in focus and uh, we have been working towards that assiduously to ensure that the department has the capacity to deliver its services. And um, I want to say also um, a prosperous new year to each and every one of us in the house. Thank you very much. Good morning all. The Child Care and Protection Agency, um, we continue to perform the numbers are being tallied, so we're not right at that moment with the figures. But when it comes to child abuse reports, we're way over the 3,000 mark of reports, and that is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Because of child abuse being a hidden crime, what we get is not the true picture, that's only the reports and it's way over the 3,000 mark. The most reported case of abuse is the neglect. That's um, the highest numbers we have in neglect, followed by sexual abuse, which is also over the 600 mark. And it's very um, concerned to us because the children, we have the reports, but Getting the perpetrators, that's been a slow task. So a lot of children are in care. We had to find alternative care for approximately 500 children. Had to be placed in foster care, kinship care, and institutional care. We tried to keep the institutional care as the last resort, but most times, is only the institution that we have to provide alternative care for a child. And it is not the best care, institutional care, but it's a lifesaver for children. And we have been working to de-institutionalize children. And the focus for the new year would certainly be on that. We have to get children out of institutions. There are too many children in institutions. We have to look at the ugly imprint of the drop-in center. And we definitely will be looking at that. We have already started and reduced the numbers there at the center. It's the first stop for a child in a difficult circumstances. A child can be placed there anytime, even at night. The police, if they, there's a child in a difficult circumstances, they can take the child to the drop-in center. And next day, the social workers will get on the case. 
So we're trying to keep the numbers down. We don't want any child staying there too long. So we will be feverishly working towards the deinstitutionalization of children in the, the new year. We will also be looking at changing the whole, this whole notion and the mindset that Child Care and Protection Agency is the, the person with the sole responsibility for protection of children. This is not the case. Child protection is everyone's business and we have to get the community and every adult member on board to work towards protecting the children. We need to look at the way children are regarded and treated. Persons need to understand the responsibility, what child abuse does to a child. And it's devastating. And the most we can do is patch them up and help them and support them to continue with life. But children hardly ever overcome child abuse. So it is serious that we stop child abuse from occurring. So in the new year, we will be looking to, and as Minister said, we will be um, extensive collaboration with the religious community, NGOs, members at the community level, and all the stakeholders to come on board to help us that we have to stop child abuse from occurring. So we tend to be more proactive rather than reactive. Rather than just responding to child abuse reports, we will be working to strengthen the family, strengthen them to be able to take better care of the children because parenting is in, is in trouble problems of parenting. So we have to strengthen families so that they can take better care of children. Um, the early childhood development, as Minister alluded to, we have been setting the groundwork for the registering and licensing of daycare facilities. We had a target set to find 300 daycare facilities, and so far we've done to 280 we were able to find and started to work with them to get them to the point of the minimum standards so that in the new year we'll be able to license and register the daycare facilities. We'll also be launching what is termed the, an awareness program for early childhood development. Early childhood development, those are serious years for a child. That's like when you know the foundation, when you're building a house, you make your foundation there because you want it to withstand the storm, the weather, and whatnot. It's the same thing with children. They must have the early childhood experiences so that they can be prepared for, for life. They can get the tools so that they can succeed in school. So we want all the parents and caregivers to understand how important the early years um, of a child's life. So we will be launching that program too for to prepare the awareness program and we also will be doing a national awareness program to sensitize the the, the population to the who this whole question of child abuse to get you to to move you to take action to protect a child we will also be looking at the parents when they when we remove a child there's not enough work being done with the parents because the ultimate goal is always for the child to return to the family. But because this, the staff is so swamped with rescuing a child, there's not enough time really to work with the families. But we are hoping with collaboration with our NGO partners and even with the, the students with the social work department at the University of Guyana that we we'll be able to, to provide more support for parents to strengthen them to really take better care of the children. So we're doing a special program for our parents who um, the children were removed and at risk of removal. A special program and helping them with social dysfunction. Because uh, the parenting is it's so easy to fix the children, but it's difficult to fix the parents. It will take a lifetime sometimes to fix the parents because of this, the dysfunction. And then the three areas, four areas that are seriously <laughs> affecting parents, and we have to look at it, is parents' mental health. Parents are not enjoying good mental health, and many parents, and it's affecting the children. Substance abuse is another area, 
And alcohol is one of the substances that is creating problems and vulnerability for children. And domestic abuse, the violence, and minister of to of women, the violence towards women, and it reaches the children. And poverty, that's the fundamental one, and I know that that is being addressed. We must um, be able to provide more resources for families so that they can better be able to take care of the children. Uh, capacity building for the staff, that's a must. We must continue to build the capacity of the staff. And uh, we're hoping that, yes, Minister alluded to too, that we'll have an increase in the staff component because there's, there's a shortage. Um, much, much more uh, staff is needed. And, but we also need to be looking to build with the volunteers. We want persons to come on board, people who have time, come and read for the children at, at the centers. Do something for a child. So we're encouraging persons in the new year to do that. So I want to wish everybody in the house, as Mr. Bonnero said, that a fruitful and happy new year. Thank you. At the ministry, uh, what we have found uh, is that we have been doing too much of uh, uh, firefighting, meaning that we have been very reactive. And we are going to make a deliberate and a concerted uh, effort in the new year to do more of the job of smoking, which is basically trying to do some fire prevention. Um, in order to do this, uh, the operationalization of the Sexual and uh, Domestic Violence Unit um, will be operationalized in 2016. Uh, this unit will be catering to the development, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of uh, policies and programs that have to do with sexual and domestic violence. Um, in addition to this, we're also looking at a suicide and prevention, suicide, sorry, suicide prevention and first aid program in uh, two of the areas that we have identified to have the highest prevalence. Uh, that is something that we are going to be working with community leaders and volunteers in 2016. And uh, at the night shelter, I think uh, Mr. Monroe and the uh, minister alluded to the situation there. Uh, over the years, we have um, developed a, well not developed, but there has been an influx or an increase in the persons there who um, have, who are basically uh, criminal elements and persons who have uh, issues with substance abuse. Uh, a program has already been implemented where we are looking at those persons. Uh, some persons have already been uh, reported to the police, uh, other persons have been identified and they are, we are working with them in terms of the abuse programs. Uh, those, persons, those persons have already been transferred to the Hugo Chavez um, Rehabilitation and Reintegration Center and work is being done uh, with those persons to uh, build capacity and uh, more or less uh, re-socialize those persons with life skills trainings, training to ensure that when they are reintegrated in society they are contributing positively to the development of the country. Uh, lastly, uh, oh, Minister spoke about uh, the work that we are doing with uh, our brothers and sisters from the hinterland, which includes our indigenous brothers and sisters. Uh, we have trained 40 persons from 20 different communities uh, to be community liaisons or community advocates, if you will, to be able to uh, prevent confront and address a lot of the social issues that have gone unreported or undetected in these areas. Uh, in the new year, we will continue to build on that because the intention is to ensure that there are representatives or persons with the knowledge in every community in Guyana to be able to identify and provide the necessary support to persons who are confronted with various social issues. As has become customary, I'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Uh, God bless. Thank you. The Ministry of Social Protection 
carries out its mandate through four programs. Program one, which is um, the administrative arm to which I will speak. We have program two, which is the um, social services. And uh, Ms. Monroe and uh, Mr. Tanner have already spoken. We have program three, which is the labor administration. And program four, child, protect, child care and protection agency, which was addressed by um, Ms. Anne Green. Okay, the administrative arm of the ministry basically provided critical support to all the other programs within the ministry. And, and, the, and the support provided included facilitating the provision of transportation, executing minor repairs and maintenance um, to the ministry's buildings and annexes, um, and equipment, ensuring proper sanitation to all the complexes. And um, we also um, did major renovation to the ministry stores, which, um, which covers basically all the programs. Um, in 2015, the ministry, the ministry began to ensure that they uh, began preparatory work to ensure that the entire ministry is always in a single complex. So um, the ministry um, began work to remedy the, um, the structure um, to the high street building to ensure that, um, that all the staff that is um, accommodated um, at one location. Consult, consult, the consultants are working on the proposed layout um, of the operation. And in 2016, and in 2016, construction work will begin to complete the structure to have the ministry relocated. Because presently, um, our ministries is not at one location. We have several locations um, all around Georgetown, and you will agree that it's very difficult to manage when we are scattered. So hopefully, um, in 2016, we should be in one location. The administrative arm of the ministry also supported several public activities in 2015, which include includes um, a photographic exhibition in observance of World Day Against Human Trafficking at the public buildings where public information materials were distributed. We also um, supported a walk and a candlelight vigil and staff education sessions to comm commemorate the cancer awareness uh, in October. Another arm which is very important on the administration is the Budget and Finance Department. Um, this department is critical to the overall functioning of the ministry and um, the ministry's um, execution of its mandate. But even though we were severely challenged in 2015 with the late, sub, with the late presentation of the budget, they were, they were um, still able to, to conduct routine activities such as payments of um, emoluments to staff, facilitate um, payment of old age pension and public assistance, and preparation and processing of payment vouchers which were carried out in accordance with the established laws, regulations, and circulars. Also in 2015, the administrative arm was able to coordinate, compile, and submit the ministry's 2016 budget on a, on a timely basis to the Ministry of Finance within the stipulated time frame that was given. Under the um, administrative arm is the personnel department, and this department is very critical to the ministry and it focuses mainly on the 
on the strengthening of, of um, the staffing in the departments and also the filling of key positions. In this context, several positions were created for the Child Care and Protection Agency, Hugo Chavez Home for Rehabilitation and Reintegration, the Public Relations and the Special Projects Unit with a number of senior positions, where a number of senior positions were advertised and filled by the Public Service um, Commission. The employment on contract maturity terms exceeded the number of approved positions, even though it was below the 2014 and 2015 figures due to the filling of all vacancies published by the Public Service Commission. At least 90% of the ministry's employment was on contract maturity terms, with several one and three years contracts. However, many of these positions will be processed through the Public Service Commission upon the expiration of, um, of these um, contracts. The administration also continue its support as I mentioned earlier to the other um, programs. And um, one such form of support um, is the continuous training in, uh, of staff, which were conducted in 2015, and um, this will continue in, um, this will continue um, in 2016. Because as you know, training is very important and, and it's also, um, important that you know we build capacity within the ministry so that's in a nutshell the um, the work of the administrative um, department and as my previous colleagues um, wish you i would also like to wish you a bright and productive 2016 thank you I would like to echo what the Honorable Minister would have said. And as Mr. Monroe stated earlier, we also would be delinking the Industrial Relations Department from the Occupational Safety Health Department. You would all realize that the officers were saddled with the work of two departments. So we want to place some more emphasis on specialization, which should See, 2016, we're resolving more complaints and handling more disputes and grievances in a timely manner. As all the other heads alluded to, we also face serious challenges with shortage of officers. For this year, 2050, we had more complaints than the previous years. As of the 23rd of December, we had a total of 1,833 complaints. Compared to 2014, we had only 1,244 complaints. 2013, 1,055 complaints. As of the 10th of this month, we will have closed, we will have closed 1,122 complaints. The monies recovered so far is a total of 79,665,216. It's almost double what we have collected in the previous years. Strikes. Again, we saw the majority of the strikes in the sugar industry. For this year, we had a total of 191 strikes, of which 188 was in the sugar industry. We had one at GGMC, one at Uni University of Guyana, and one at Bosai. We were able to resolve all of these strikes. During 2015, we did a total of 51 seminars, of which we tried to reach out to the employers as well as employees to bring awareness on the various labor legislations in the country. Inspections. 
We did a total of 597 inspections throughout the length and breadth of the end. Collective labor agreements, we countersigned seven collective labor agreements, of which six were conditions of employment, that is wages and salaries, hours of work, benefits more or less. And we countersigned one recognition agreement. Truancy, we continue to collaborate with the Ministry of Education and we had six exercises going out with them looking for children not attending school, during school hours. And finally, it is our intention to take employers to court, but if we cannot come to an amicable settlement, if we cannot negotiate a solution to the various complaints that employees or former employees will bring to the ministry, we have to prosecute them. And we took 46 different employers to court, of which we filed 267 charges. And that is what we have done for the year. That is the Labor Occupational Safety Department. Thank you.